everyone! In this video, Kelly and I are showing you how to shoot and animate a stop motion GIF. We are first going to be taking you through the shooting process, then editing in Photoshop. Besides your camera equipment, a few important accessories to have with you while shooting include an extension cord, three prong plug adapters, A clamps, a cat, maybe, more A clamps, clothes pins, command strips or adhesive putty, safety pins, fishing line, scissors, phone charger, steamer, and a portable speaker. To avoid headache when aligning your frames later, a tripod will be your best friend. We began by setting up our camera before we actually planned to begin shooting to plan our shot. We check what our frame looks like to inform how we will light our set and adjust our props. It took some trial and error, readjusting our backdrop to fit our frame, perfecting our prop elements, etc. But once we're happy, it's time to start shooting. With my lens set to autofocus, I hold down the shutter halfway to lock my focus on our subject, the purse. Then flip the switch on my lens to manual focus so my focus won't shift on every shot. I take one photo that does not include the moving element, the spider, in case I need a clean frame for compositing the images in Photoshop later. Kelly was on spider duty. She moved it little by little for us to get all of the frames that we needed. She even pulled back some of its legs and I took multiple shots in high speed continuous to capture his leg in the air. We definitely shot more frames than we needed, but it's better to overshoot and cull your frames down than to begin editing your stop motion and wish you had more. This tutorial brought to you by Dr. Pepper and Flamin' Hot Cheetos. Now that I've selected my frames and made adjustments in Lightroom, I'm going to start my Photoshop process by retouching my base image. For this GIF, my base image will be the image with no spider in it. This is the only image that I'll be retouching, so I can avoid retouching every frame. I'll be isolating the spiders and pulling them in as their own separate layers later. I'm going to create a new layer and name it Retouching. The keyboard shortcut for creating a new empty layer is Shift Command N, or you can go to Layer and select New Layer. I retouch on a blank layer instead of duplicating my background layer to keep the size of my PSD small. Make sure that your sampling preference up top is changed from current layer to current and below. That way you're sampling from the pixels beneath your empty layer while only making adjustments to the empty layer. Using the healing brush, I'm going to remove any noticeable blemishes on my backdrop and my props. The keyboard shortcut is J, or you can click on the band-aid icon on your toolbar. To make sure that your retouching is non-destructive, it's very important to do this on a separate layer that is not your background layer. That way, these edits can be adjusted if needed later. In the top left corner, you can change how hard or how smooth the edge of your brush is. You can adjust the size of your brush here as well, but it's much quicker to change your brush size by using the bracket keys. Left bracket key makes your brush smaller, right bracket key makes it larger. To use the healing brush, hold down the option key and click the area of the image that you want to sample from. Then brush over any blemishes that you want to remove. Now that I'm happy with my retouching, I also want to intensify the highlights on the candles and the Chanel logo. I'm going to do that with a curves layer. For curves, go to layer, new adjustment layer, and select curves. With my new curves layer over in my layers panel now, I'm going to change the blending mode from normal to screen. As you can see, this dramatically affects the exposure of the whole image. But luckily, we have this layer mask, this white rectangle you see on the layer, that will allow us to brush this effect in only where we want it. On a layer mask, white reveals and black hides. 
so I'm going to invert this mask to hide it and use a white brush to paint the brightening effect back in. To invert your layer mask, use the shortcut Command-I while it's selected. At the bottom of your toolbar, you'll see the foreground and background colors of your brush. To paint with white, make sure that white is the foreground color. While in the brush tool, you can quickly alternate between the foreground and background colors by hitting X. This is great for when you paint in more than you wanted. You can easily change your brush back to black to cover what you painted in again. I like to set my brush opacity low, around 20 to 30%, and gradually build the effect I'm painting in. Now that I've fine-tuned my image, I'm going to create a folder for these adjustments so they will be separate from the spider frames that I'm going to be masking in. Keeping your layers organized is important in case you need to come back to one and make more changes later. Create a group with your adjustment layers by selecting them and clicking the folder icon at the bottom of the layers panel. First, I'm going to create a new layer that will include all of my retouching adjustments, as well as the background layer. For merging visible layers onto a new layer, the keyboard shortcut is Shift Command Option E. This layer will be the beginning of our GIF, so I'm going to name it Frame 1. To keep our frames organized, I'm going to create another group by clicking the folder icon again and naming it Frames. Using the lasso tool on the toolbar, I'm going to trace around the area of the image with the spider to create a new layer. Once selected, I create a new layer with the keyboard shortcut Command J. I first rename the layer to Frame 2, then I use the Move tool to drag it over to my base image. The Move tool is the top icon on the toolbar or keyboard shortcut V. Before releasing this layer, hold down the Shift key in order for the layer to snap into the same place in the frame that it originally came from. Make sure that this layer is properly named in sequence and placed in the frames folder. You will repeat this step for all of your frames. I carefully mask out anything that I don't want to appear moving on each frame as I bring them in. Isolating the motion in a stop motion GIF helps create a polished look in the end. Even when holding shift to snap each frame into place, if the camera moved at all, I occasionally still have to nudge them into place with the move tool. Once you've brought in all your frames, it's time to make them move. We'll start by creating the animation timeline by going to Window and selecting Timeline. When it appears, click on the icon with three small squares in the bottom left corner of the panel to switch to an easier interface for stop motion. The first frame will be made from the visible layers, so make sure only frame one, the base image, is visible. Before you bring in the rest of your frames, change your looping option from once to forever on the drop-down menu in the timeline panel. Also, the default time for each frame is set to 5 seconds. Adjust this by clicking on the time listed under each frame's thumbnail icon. I recommend 0.1 or 0.2 seconds to start. I'll create a new frame from each layer by clicking the folded paper icon. With this new duplicate frame selected on the timeline, I'll turn on the frame 2 layer, adding the first frame with the spider. Repeat this step for all of your frames, and turn off the layers that you don't want to see underneath as the animation progresses. After completing the animation, you can see in the layers panel that I added a selective color layer. I did a quick color adjustment so the hues of pink more closely matched one another. With this original PSD file saved, I'm now going to crop this image from its original aspect ratio to 4x5 because this is the aspect ratio for vertical Instagram posts. You can select the cropped option from the toolbar or hit the keyboard shortcut C. Change the aspect ratio to 4x5 from the drop-down menu in the top left corner, then position the crop where you want it in frame. After checking that the cropping works for the animation, I'll save a separate PSD from my original by going to File, Save As, and saving this new PSD with crop at the end of the title. 
The last universal change to make before we begin exporting will be to change our file's color profile to be best suited for web viewing. To do so, go to Edit and select Convert to Profile. When the dialog box appears, select sRGB from the drop-down menu. Deselect Flatten Image to preserve appearance so you don't merge your layers. To export a GIF for social media, specifically Instagram, it must be saved as a video that is 3 seconds or longer. Extend the length of your GIF in the timeline by selecting every frame, then click the folded paper icon again. This duplicates the frames in sequential order. Do this as many times as needed to reach 3 seconds. Because each of my frames is 0.15 seconds, I duplicated the whole sequence twice just to be safe. Next, change the image size. Use the keyboard shortcut Command Option I to bring up the image size dialog box. For whatever reason, Photoshop has trouble exporting videos more than 2,304 pixels on the longest side. So change the longest dimension to 2,304 and the smaller side will snap to fit the aspect ratio. To export the video, go to File, Export, Render Video. I'm erasing crop out of the file name since this will be my final version. In my project folder, I have already created my final subfolder for my finished deliverables and that is where I've set this video to export to. Double check that the document size matches the image dimensions that were just set. If everything looks right, hit render. Next, I'll export a GIF file for web. I'm going to start by deleting all the extra frames created for the video version. Exporting that many frames on a GIF file would make it extremely slow to load on a web page. In order to help the GIF load faster on the web, I'm also going to shrink the image size. Clicking Command Option I again, I'm going back to image size. I'm changing the pixels per inch to 72, which is standard for web resolution files. Then I'm going to set my pixel dimensions to 1200 on the smallest side. To export, go to File, Export, Save for Web. In the screen that appears, I double check in the left side that I'm exporting at 100% and the looping option is set to forever. Then I save to the correct finals folder. 